Ria, let's talk about your life first, going back. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Woodford Green in Essex. So the first memories of football was playing in the garden with my brother. And then I used to go and watch him play. And I remember like seeing a women's team playing and I'd say, oh, like to my dad, I really would love to play for, like, for a team. So he got me into a local team. Then I moved to Leighton Orient Centre of Excellence. Uh, that was like a good experience. I was there for like six seasons. And then after West Ham, I went to the States. So I was offered a full scholarship at the Academy of Art University, which is in San Francisco, where I was able to study interior architectural design. So how did you think of the States as an option? How, what, how were you made aware that you could do something? Honestly, bend it like Beckham. <laughs> <laughs> I, watched, I watched the film when I was like 10 and I was like, okay, this is what I want to do. There's a few companies in the UK that help players get to the States. They had like a showcase in England. They also filmed like your games and stuff. And then you would like edit it and put it together as a show role. And, mm. and then from there they'd showcase it to more coaches so then that's how my coach sort of, sort of like contacted me was through her seeing my show role. How much did that improve you as a footballer going out there? Uh, I definitely think it improved me a lot in terms of professionalism, setting me up for things like you know doing interviews even like after games like that was very frequent. The, the plan was you wanted to play football, you did yeah. that because you have to study something. Yeah. Was there a point during the studying that you thought I wouldn't actually really enjoy this? Yeah like honestly from like being offered the scholarship and looking at the list of what I could study, I was like, you know what, I've always been in interested in architecture, but I never really saw myself actually doing that, just because I feel like in the UK it's so like, you play sport, okay, go and do something, study sport. So you've got a degree and you're a really good footballer. How did you go about the next stage, finding a club and, and work as well at the same time? I started just going on trials, the team, different teams, and then yeah, ended up at Spurs and they liked me, so they wanted they signed me, so then I signed from there. Yeah, I thought to be fair, my experience of coming home and finding a job and finding a team was actually quite easy. I think it was more for me the stages after that, like I've got an injury, I had to have surgery, that was quite a difficult period for myself. And obviously working for a big company it must have been quite a few hours. How did you balance that with the football? Balancing work life with football at the time was really difficult. That's something I struggled with, just purely having to sit in a desk for eight hours. That was like really difficult and then sort of mentally prepare myself. OK, like I've got to get home, I've got to do the hour commute home to then change, grab something to eat and go again and be focused on training and like all in the midst of that still try and have fun. This is your current project. Yeah. What was the brief from the client on this? For this project, it was actually, my client was very flexible. They wanted a space that a part was for somewhere for them to go away from the other parts of their house, house that is like mostly used. So this is more of like a kind of cinema room vibe, but they did have pieces such as this um, wall lamp and this pendant lamp that they wanted to keep. So it was keeping in mind that, okay, they want this, these two things kept within the space. How do I provide something of their, basically their brief and how do I make it spectacular? And that's vintage, is it, that one? Yeah, so this is a vintage 60s piece along with the pendant light as well. Anyone in the Palace team tried to um tap you up yet for your services? No, not yet, not yet. <laughs> Hopefully, that's fine. If they want me to come in, then I can definitely come and help. So how was training today? It was good, it was enjoyable. We did a long warm up which was needed after our weekend off. Then after that we did some like passing drills and then after that we went into like our session with Kirk and Dean and then we just was doing like technical passing stuff like that and then a little small sided game which was pretty fun. And then after that we did some 1v1s, 2v2s, 3v3s which was energetic, a lot of running. So we trained three times a week twice on the pitch and once in the gym and then a game on Sunday. So we're active as a team like four, four times a week. And how much has women's football over here changed since you've been playing, like with preparation? Uh, 
Uh, I definitely think it's become more professional. Um, I think that in terms of like the quality of coaches that we have now is much better and also sort of people like, our strength, like having strength and conditioning coaches, I think that that's like a big thing that they've brought in. Uh, it's tiring, but it's something that we all love to do, which is so we make those sacrifices. And you just get used to not really having a weekend? I feel like football is our weekend, so we do get used to that. A lot of people tend to have every weekend off, so like when you do get the opportunity to have, say, a weekend off, you still might do a bit of training, but it's like not your whole day, sort of. So, yeah, you do cherish it.